So talk to me about what's happening and how um, young people, let me put it that way, because we're seeing a lot of innovation right now with young people. Uh, there's a technology hub in Lagos, Yaba to be precise. Uh, there is also a technology hub here in Abuja, or perhaps not just one, a lot more is also sprouting up. How important is technology these days? Uh, was it this morning I was watching CNN before mm -hmm. I came uh, to the office and I saw Google, I think yesterday launched the Google Assistant, whereby you can speak to Google now to book yeah. your appointments for you. Yeah. So if you want to call me or, or something, you just tell Google Assistant, please call Nancy at 11 a.m. and tell her what you want to tell her. So we're seeing that the world is going, True. you know, you, you know, so what do you have to say about that? I think it's, it's um, technology for us in this world is an enabler. It's helping us to make things that we used to do on a regular basis a lot more easier to do. Uh, it's making the world smaller than it used to be. Um, and we're pretty much, I think it's one of the best times to live on this planet because <laughs> mm. everyone is just looking for how to make things easier. You just, you, you, you have to take your kids to school. How do you make that simpler with technology? You have to get somebody to your house to do a house chore. How do you make that simpler with technology? With also the addition of artificial intelligence, intelligence into yeah. that, uh, it's even more exciting. I, if I use, for instance, what happens in agriculture and the farms, uh, today now you have servers that sit in the farm and do some of the work that a technical field specialists would have done. And it's now giving information to the owner of the farm about the state of the crops of the farm on a day by day, minute by minute basis, without worrying about uh, somebody that's tired or weak or not able to circle around the farm, you get all that data now. And it's just on a server, they're getting all of that information for you. So I think gradually, as the world continues to grow and become a lot more mature, people are finding better ways of using technology as an enabler to make things faster, simpler, and smoother for us to be used. Do you think we've embraced it here in Nigeria Bearing in mind that there are still a lot of ignorant people, there are still a lot of people that are poor, there are still a lot of people that are unemployed. If you're even talking about data, we need enabling infrastructure. Yeah. Data is still high yeah. to facilitate that technology and all of that. I think in what we're seeing happening in Nigeria is where, uh, I think we're seeing a very uh, early stage of how we're using technology. Um, if I Pick an example being the e-commerce sector, for instance, that has a lot of people related with some of the uh, websites and technologies that have come up um, of late. It's still barely eight years. And in eight years, you have maybe circled around one or two startups that have gone full circle and churned out new sets of individuals to start up another uh, set of startups. And so it's still very, very early days. We're still getting to understand the potential that we could use technology for in our country. Uh, but very important for us is the fact that we've leapfrogged a lot of the developments that would have taken us years to get to with everyone having mobile phone devices. And as people continue to have such devices, as people continue to build solutions that are driven by mobile devices, I think gradually, even for the poorest people you mentioned, they have mobile phone devices and we are finding better ways of reaching them without spending so much around data and how much we spend on data. There's still some subtle, smarter ways of getting to people that are not able to spend so much on data. How, what are those subtle ways? Because for I instance, can, yeah. um, when I'm okay. speaking to, my f to the farmers who work with in, in, in farm crowding, for instance, um, if you would expect a farmer to start downloading your apps and uh, start interacting with you via your apps, but they do short message services, they do SMS services. And so when we're designing our applications for farmers in particular, who are in rural areas, we use things like USSD codes. Okay, okay, that's what I wanted to come to, just like the banks have. Exactly. Too. So you have USSD codes. Yes. Like star seven, yes. whatever, star... And X, Y, Z. And you find a lot of them using it. In okay. fact, it's even more attractive when you can design it to the level of his language or her language. 
when he interacts with you based on what he understands. Mm. I think that... Is that pidgin, Yoruba, Hausa, uh, any Hausa, language? Hausa, yes, or, or Yoruba, uh, pidgin. You know, pidgin itself, it's still very... Everybody have their own syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> but, but isn't it like very common? Even on Google, there's pidgin. Yes. Uh, you know, some of the telecoms, uh, or I think all of them have uh, pidgin service and yes, all that. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, Even it's broadcasting popular. now has pidgin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite popular. <laughs> yes, we have stations in the country that are just purely pidgin based. True, true. Yeah. Uh, gradually, as I think one day we saw design a syllabus for pidgin and then ah. maybe it becomes a standard language. Yeah, because Perhaps I can we'll say something in world. one word that you understand yes. me. But the word pidgin is different uh, from. Oh, yes. <laughs> and all of this, I understand what you're saying. So, yes, building technology that relates to uh, the basic level, understanding the customer you're trying to beat and how you beat them based on what they already are used to getting interactions from or getting communication from. It's important for anyone building any technology. I would want to design an app for farmers, and I'm designing something that will be running on an iOS device. It's useless. It's a useless um, application mm. of technology in that so, regard. So how do you apply that technology? What do you build for farmers that we know that are still at a subsistence level, that are not as rich as we want them to be, like their counterparts in the U.S.? Like I went for a speaking engagement, I think, last okay. week, and I was telling them over there, uh, a group of people okay. that you know there are a lot of opportunities in agriculture for yeah. example and i made the example i know you you know what i'm talking about yes. you see the farmers abroad yes uh, places like texas and all those places, north, yes. north carolina yes farmers wealthy wealthy farmers, farmers and they and have millions of dollars in their accounts and, they and you see them so commonly dressed and but these are people that are controlling their economies yes yes um so how do you get applications to sort our kind of farmers Subsistence, no tractor farmers, uh, hoe and cutlass, which is. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think the, the first thing is these farmers still communicate with mobile devices. Yes. Uh, so, they also still send short message services. Yes. And so, in designing what we do, um, for instance, uh, our work scissors have technical field specialists sit on the farm to work with the farmers throughout the farming cycle. Now, one technical field specialist that coordinates 50 farmers, for instance, in a particular location, now needs to scale his operation to work with, say, 500 farmers. You don't want to get 10 technical field specialists to work with 500 farmers. So what we've done is we're building technology around how that technical field specialist can now amplify his effort to reach 500 farmers without having to replicate himself. So with USSD codes, he's able to have back and forth interactions with the farmers. Press one to say what you're going yeah. through. Press two to okay. give your answers back. And so the, the farmers are now able to communicate uh, with us. So at that level, that's one. Two is one of the things that farmers still suffer from in the country especially is, is many of them are still unbanked. Yeah. And so we, we're looking for the right set of partners to work with to extend agent banking to these farmers where they're able to trust the system that is available in their in areas, order to, in their areas mm. so that they don't have to travel 200 kilometers. Like a farmer in Edo State were working with that, was saying, so how will I get my pay? Do I have to go to Ekoma that is about uh, 150 well, kilometers bank, from yeah. Yes. And so agent banking is something that we still need to continue to amplify. Do you think efforts. it has penetrated that much? Because I spoke with... Uh, I had a program on payment system and all of that, and I took it up with the director of banking and payments department of the CBN because they are the ones facilitating the payment system. Yeah. And I did ask him about this agent banking because it's not everywhere you have banks. And just like you said, there are a lot of people that are still unbanked and financially excluded, yeah. though the uh, CBN said that they are trying to get to a target of 80% uh, by 2020. Yeah. I hope they do that, which is just two years' time. Yeah. Do you think that agent banking has penetrated that much? Because I took it up with him that, no, I haven't seen it that much. I think the problem is pretty much opening up channels for mobile banking to happen, where mm. you have mobile money, for instance, what you have in Kenya with Impesa. Yes, Impesa. Provide this like this is for people to be able. There are a lot of smart individuals that are excited about providing such solutions. And recently, I understand that the central bank and uh, I think one or two other parastatos have come together to say they are going to open it. They are having discussions about opening up these licenses. If they do that, whether it's with the telcos or yes, with pri the yeah. private sector there seems or startups, there to be startups, that rivalry there. Who would lead? Is it the now, telcos or the banks? Until that is solved. Yeah. We will not have a situation where we can 
get agent banking to the right mm. people at the scale we want to to achieve the 80 percent that is being uh, created as a target mm. for 2020. So let's get to the table and open up this license. If you do so, there are a lot of smart individuals that will build solutions. I already know of one or two solutions that are out here, but a lot of them are struggling with getting the right license in order to do the work they are meant to do to reach the people that really need these solutions. You go to Kenya, I, I mean, the, 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 uh, uh, the penetration rate for, for the banking penetration rate in Kenya yeah, is, I think is it's, 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 it's than around 75%. Yeah. Yeah. So almost everyone yeah. there is banked. Yeah. One way or the other, whether it's with Empesa or with any other solution, or Empesa actually which having was a bank with Safaricom those days, exactly. Yeah. Early so 2000. I think that is, those are the things we just need to open. We just need to open up the uh, put up the right framework in terms of regulation, hasten up on the process of getting these things regularized, and then open up the system for people to now come in and create fantastic solutions for the people we are looking at. 